to the Bethesda Presbyterian Church. We are glad that we could come to you in this way. Um, as you might notice, um, the church looks a little different. I, I, I can't remember the last time I saw uh, animals inside the sanctuary. I hope we don't get in trouble for that. No, uh, we have come to you uh, today with BBS Sunday Worship. We are awfully proud of all of our staff, all of our workers, all of our kids who participated. Uh, we are extremely uh, excited, joyful, and, and thankful for what God has blessed and done uh, over the last uh, week. We are humbled by the turnout, and uh, we are proud to come to you uh, in this way. So uh, we'd like to invite you once again uh, to uh, get your bulletins. Uh, if you have them, and uh, let's prepare our hearts and our minds for uh, a, a VBS Sunday style worship. Uh, with that, we invite um, Brett Kettle come forward this morning. I'm sorry, a coal train. Coal train is coal here, train. not Brett Kettle. Coal right. train. Coal train. Well, Bethesda uh, Church family, it's a wrap. Vacation Bible School 2020 at home edition uh, has concluded, but what great fun we had uh, putting all of this together uh, two weeks ago and then watching it uh, this week. Uh, it's been a, a lot of fun, and uh, we've had uh, lots of positive and encouraging feedback. There are lots of views. You can go in and see how many people have viewed it on YouTube and how many people have viewed it on Facebook. And so we're trusting God is, is reaching people in their homes, uh, not only in this community, but across the state and even possibly across the world. We have no idea the impact and influence that Rocky Railway VBS uh, is having right here in our community and really across the world. Um, if you've watched v VBS this year, you, you will remember God sightings and I don't have enough time to tell you about all the God sightings we've seen the past two weeks just through VBS but one in particular uh, Lee was Wednesday uh, morning of Vacation Bible School there was a lady I have no idea who she is she had two children they were masked up they knocked on the door Westminster Hall's door and um, she said I haven't registered but we've been watching Vacation Bible School and we have really enjoyed it. And we just wanted to come and give a donation to uh, Faith Dixon and for her heart transplant. Didn't know the lady at all, and if you're watching, thank you so much. And she donated a very generous uh, donation towards that uh, mission project. And the only discouraging news is, she said, make sure this does not go in le locomotive leases. But she wants it to, to apply to go in Coltrane's face. So anyway, we're grateful that it's going to a great cause, even if I have to eat another pie in my face this year. Um, uh, enough of that, but uh, I wish I could take the time to thank each and every person. Uh, maybe that'll scroll at the end with the credits, but um, you're not going to get recognition maybe from, from me this morning, but God knows, and that's what's most important. He see, sees the time and effort and energy that you put into it, and I know that God's going to bless you for that. I do want a special thanks to Lisa Davis, who has spent countless hours, tireless energy, not just the days of, but the uh, weeks preceding and all the time it took to make VBS at Home Edition a reality and a success. I'd also like to thank Johnny Deal. Uh, words cannot um, express how appreciative we are. Not only was he here for the whole taping and the whole week after the taping to make sure it gets into your homes via the internet, but the hours and hours late at night, he had to edit all that was filmed. And so countless hours. Johnny Deal, thank you so much. And then last uh, but not least, our pastor. Um, I get myself in trouble for this, but uh, I've never seen a, a pastor embrace Vacation Bible School like Pastor Jim Davis did. I mean, not just the out of boys and out of girls and the encouraging words, the positive energy and, and feedback he gave us, but he jumped in both feet, um, took water in the face, um, took all our sarcasm and all our um, uh, pranks, and just jumped in both feet. And, very supportive and very participatory and so thank you pastor jim for your countless hours 
uh, of work you put into that. Um, if you haven't had a chance to watch VBS 2020, it's not too late. It's still on, on the website. Just go to our website, click on the Facebook page link or the YouTube, fa YouTube page link, and you can uh, click on it and watch it. Um, I guarantee you'll be blessed, and you'll also enjoy a few laughs watching VBS 2020. And the, uh, another announcement is I want to remind you about the three newly added ways to give to our missions different mission projects we have. Sacks of Love, of course. If you go to our website or go to Realm, click on the giving link. There's a little drop box. You just click that little arrow for which fund uh, you want designated uh, to give your gift. And it's either um, Sacks of Love Ministry, the Sunday School Project. Uh, I don't have time to go into that. I talked about it a little bit last week, but that's our Sunday School offering that goes to Financially support three international children living in extreme poverty through the organizations of Holt and Compassion International. More inform information later about that. I want to thank those of you who did contribute. We're able, that fund was totally depleted. We're able to now fund it for the next two months. So if, if you want to give uh, to that Sunday School Ministry, uh, please uh, click on that link and designate it in that way. And also the VBS Mission Project. You've heard me talk about Faith Dixon already, the Alpaca uh, Ministry in Ecuador that we're supporting as well. Pastor Jim and Lisa are going to talk about that in just a minute. But that now has been added. So that is continuing through the summer. So if you didn't have a chance to give to the VBS Mission Project, you can still do that simply by going on our website, clicking the giving link, and designate the VBS Mission Project. And you don't have to give online. You can still mail your check in or bring your check into the office. And uh, just make sure you designate where you want uh, your offering to go. And then lastly, um, there will be no Wednesday night Bible study, interactive Bible study with Pastor Jim Davis. Um, he's for the next two weeks. For the next two weeks. For the period. next two weeks. Right. All right. So uh, Pastor Jim's taking a, a day or two off or maybe more. Um, much deserved vacation time and, and to rest and relax and refresh and so no Wednesday night Bible study. I think that's it for the announcements so at this time uh, Lisa if you join me we're going to call Bethesda Church to worship. Protect me O God for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad. And my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure. You show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. Let, Let us worship, worship the Lord, Lord our God. God. And we're going to transition to our opening hymn, Your Power Will Pull Us Through. That's the Vacation Bible School theme song.
sisters in Christ now let us join together in one voice and let's uh, pray uh, our, and confess our sins before our gracious and loving God let us pray oh God when we are put to the test help us to trust Jesus in the hard times of life if called upon to share our faith in you help us when we lack the courage to trust you Sometimes we confuse your will with our own, and we rely only upon ourselves. Seeking security from the hard things in life, we turn to devices we control. Your power gives us hope in this life. Your word proclaims your power and love for us all. As you help us, help us to reach out to others in the name of Jesus. Forgive us when we forget you and your truth. And in our weakness, may our power work through us in mighty ways as we live and love, trust in Jesus Christ. Let us take the next moment for personal confession. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ delivers those who place their trust in Jesus. We are redeemed through the powerful blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us now uh, affirm our faith uh, as the family of God in the Apostles' Creed. Uh, if you know it, please join in with me. Brothers and sisters, what do we believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sat at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uh, we now um, uh, let us uh, do uh, or join in with our uh, next hymn, uh, Hymn In You Alone.
if we were in our sanctuary and uh, we were all in it, um, we would pass the plate around and take up an offering, offering for uh, not only the, the mission projects that uh, Brent, Brent or Coltrane uh, articulated, uh, but uh, also to further the ministries and the mission of Bethesda Presbyterian Church. Uh, we are uh, Bethesda Presbyterian Church, local church to Camden for, for many centuries, and uh, we have uh, our own ministries going on. But also, we're connected to the larger church uh, in not only uh, our state, our country, but in the world as well. So uh, the, the money that you would tithe uh, to us uh, would also go to uh, helping uh, those around the world, Christ's global church. So uh, we encourage you to give. You can go on our website and do that via rail. Uh, you can do that a couple different ways. Even uh, you can do it through your phone uh, or text. Uh, so um, we would also ask that you would lift up not only our VBS, our church, uh, and our community, but, but all those who are connected to the church uh, in prayer. Uh, please be a, a prayer resource. Uh, for uh, the Church of Christ, uh, not just BPC, but uh, the Church of Jesus Christ of the world over. Uh, with that, we ask you to give, uh, give freely um, with a cheerful heart. Uh, we now invite uh, Locomotive Lisa to come forward. Good morning, boys and girls and families and friends. I'm so glad to have you here. Um, worshiping our Lord together, and that we're doing it at Rocky Railway. Um, I have had a wonderful time with you this week. Um, if this had been a previous year at this point, you would be coming on stage and singing the VBS songs um, in front of all of our family and friends. But this year, I feel blessed that despite the limitations and restrictions of our world that we're still able to share our VBS songs and hopefully you're singing and dancing at home and we're able to virtually be at Rocky Railway. So thank you so much for joining us. It has been a wonderful um, vacation Bible school. Um, it is, it, it's not what it's normally been and that's been a challenge and kind of sad not to see you guys, but um, knowing that we've gotten feedback. Some of you sent pictures or videos in just sharing with you that you've been encouraged and that you're tuning in and it's making a difference. We thank you for that and we give all the glory to God because um, we just really prayed over this hard and I just, I'm so thankful and just want to give that big, big praise report. Um, you know, Coltrane mentioned a God sighting and that's something we do in Vacation Bible School is really focus on God sightings and that's just noticing God at work in our lives because he's He's at work in our lives, whether we notice it or not. So we just challenge all of, all of our kids and adults alike to open our eyes and ears and to make some God sightings. And so, um, again, just like Coltrane said, I can't tell you all the God sightings because there were so many of them. But one of them is um, that I really enjoyed at VBS was our mission project. So uh, alpacas, raising money to get alpacas for families in Ecuador. And um, we do something like that every year at VBS, and that's wonderful. And we, we've wrapped that up now, and stay tuned. It will wrap up in our finale after the worship service. Um, but our second mission project was Faith Dixon needing a heart transplant. And that was really near and dear to our hearts and community. And we're not stopping. We're going to go all summer. And what, at the end of the summer, uh, we have Rally Day, which is when we kick off the school year. And that's when we will announce that total of how much we've raised all summer long. So this is now becoming from a VBS mission project to a church-wide, community-wide mission project. Um, so I'm so excited about that. And we have a goal set. And I know you guys, you like to, to beat goals. But let me just tell you what our goal is. Um, $4,000. She actually has to raise $14,000, so add another zero to that. So our goal is four, and that still sounds like a lot, but if we get 40 families to raise or donate $100, then we'll make it. So um, I just challenge you guys to um, keep giving the money, and you can use the Realm drop, drop down box or bring it in, mail it in. Um, that would be wonderful. Uh-oh. So... <laughs> We're going to uh, go stay on track, uh, not run off the rails here, but we're going to blow some steam off 
and, and we're going to plus you up. I mean, we know that, that social distancing. Um, so, no, 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 it's okay. No, no, you, we, you know. But um, I'm going to challenge folks if we hit our goal of $4,000, um, then um, I get a pie in the face. <laughs> Uh, so so, so uh, we hit our goal 4,000, I get a pie in the face. Uh, and um, we have talked amongst ourselves, uh, the staff, the, those that you would have seen on camera uh, for VBS, and we have all, for the most part, agreed that for any gift over $500, you can pick your own person from the staff to get a pie in the face. <laughs> you can either deliver the pie in the face boat yourself or you can have uh, our crew to do it. Uh, so, so for every $500 gift uh, or above, uh, you get to choose uh, a pie in the face. And if you don't choose, um, either uh, me, myself, uh, Locomotive Lisa or Coltrane will step in and take it on their behalf. Uh, so uh, that, that's what we have and uh, I think um, uh, we, we can help not only Alpacas for Peruvian families, which is a big thing. Uh, alpaca can uh, really increase the uh, viability of sustainable living for um, families. Uh, but Faith needs a heart, and she needs a heart now, uh, not later. Uh, so while we're making this mission, uh, our VBS mission, we're also making it for our church too. So um, this is something that uh, we need to, to give and give mightily to. Faith needs a shot at life. Please give. Thank you, Thank Pastor. You. I'm really excited about that. So generous for the pastor. Hadn't been here but a few months, and he's willing to take a pie in the face. I, I, I think Paul Crane's in, in for it. <laughs> All right, we have another guest speaker. Conductor Charlie wants to echo what Pastor just said. Um, so... Coltrane or Locomotive Lisa is getting a pie in the face after this worship service, so stay tuned. Okay, so it's two different things. I'm glad right. you brought this right. up. Right, that's why I want to make sure everybody at home. So, after this worship service, the VBS finale will air, so make sure you stay tuned. We're going to name the baby alpaca, and um, also, whoever collected the most money this week at Vacation Bible School will get a pie in the face. What Pastor Jim is talking about is something completely different. It's kind of taking it to the next level, okay? So instead of just ending with our VBS finale, we're going to keep raising money for Faith Dixon and her new art. So if somebody cuts a check for $500, Pastor Jim gets the pie from that person or one of the staff. If they don't want us to do the pie, Absolutely. somebody will. But Pastor Jim will take a pie for a donation of $500. Nope. He's going to take it if, if we read our church goal. That's goal. right. $4,000. $4,000 church goal. $4,000. I get the pie in the face. And, 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 um, I'll keep them straight. I'm, I'm thinking uh, Coltrane's going down <laughs> and, and taking the pie in the face okay. in, 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 uh, after this worship service okay. uh, between Lisa So we'll and, uh, tune in I for the BBS right. finale. And then at the end of the summer, when the uh, Faith Dixon Mission Project, when we announce our totals for that whole church-wide project, then we will have an additional pie in the face. If we meet our goal, it will be Pastor Jim. And if one person donates over 500, they get to pick somebody they've seen on VBS. Vacation Bible School staff. Absolutely. Person. There we go. Okay. All right. All right. Cole just, or, or Conductor Charlie just reminded me one more thing. One more thing. Some of these people have no idea who Faith Dixon is. Oh, yeah, you're right. Not everybody's watched Vacation Bible School. Um, well, they should. Well, they should. <laughs> Hopefully they will. But we want to show you... Um, just a, take a minute video, a very short clip, so that you can catch a glimpse. Oh, they should meet her. Uh, they should meet her. All okay, right, so let's, let's, let's show them the video of Faith Dixon. <laughs>
All right. I'm so glad we shared faith with them. And I think that um, they've got all the information. And they're going to stay tuned after worship for the VBS finale. And I'm going to close us in prayer. Wonderful. Um, kids, will you close your eyes, bow your head, and repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God, God, thank you for Jesus' power. Thank you for Jesus' power. That pulls us through. That pulls us through. Take our offerings. Take our, our offerings to this mission. To this mission. And make a difference in lives. And make a difference in lives. We thank you. We thank you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, I'd like to welcome Dr. John Gardner. I mean, Good morning, BYG. Well, it is a great day, a fantastic Sunday morning, and a great day to worship our Lord and Savior. And I'm just really super excited to be here this morning. You know, this is Vacation Bible School Sunday, so I want to talk a little bit about Bible school. Um, I do want to remind you that how hard, or I just want to tell you how hard it is for us to have done Bible school without our middle and high school helpers. Um, each day I was up on stage doing Imagination Station. I miss those guys that would help and hand out. And It's hard to hand stuff out when no one's here to get it. But y'all were just you know, severely missed. And I hope that we're together again next, next year. As you know, the thing was Rocky Railway this year. And each time during the Bible point, the boys and girls and all the other leaders would yell, Trust Jesus! Oh, I do it wrong every time. It's not yaha, it's trust, trust Jesus, Jesus because trust Jesus. we're pulling on the train whistle. Well, that got me to thinking that, you know, one way we trust Jesus is we praise him every day. And there, there were, I was talking about how to praise Jesus and, and how important it is that we trust Jesus through praising Jesus. And there are three things I wanted to talk about, um, about praising Jesus, because as we trust Jesus, we are praising him. I recently read a devotion about how the how many people speak Jesus' name in vain. They'll say, Jesus Christ, and they do it when they're angry or upset or mad or hurt or frustrated or, or they've made a habit of something and it's a bad habit because that hurts Jesus' feelings. I know when my dad would yell, John Gardner, I knew that I was in trouble because I had done something and he was angry or frustrated with me. And I didn't like hearing it, so I can imagine what Jesus Christ thinks when he hears his name used in vain. So the devotion said that one way we can praise Jesus is simply to whisper his name during the day. And so that Jesus hears us going, Jesus Christ. He hears it from our heart. That's exactly right. You can even add an I love you on the end of it. Jesus, 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 I love you. Just so that he hears his name in a positive way instead of negative I've heard people say that the Presbyterians are the frozen chosen because we sit quietly in our pews until the end of the sermon. There are churches that say, praise Jesus, and even trust Jesus, and hallelujah, mm -hmm, um, all during the sermon. And um, that's okay. Uh, when the Spirit feels, you know, moves you, you want to respond, and that's good. It's just, we don't do that here at Bethesda, but that doesn't make it wrong. I know we've done that at some of our youth conferences, and I've heard you say that you feel fake when you're doing it. Well, again, it's whatever moves you. When the Spirit moves you to do something, it's okay to do that. I enjoy visiting the churches that have the call and response. Um, again, it's got to come from a loving heart. And it doesn't matter how you praise Jesus as long as it's coming from a loving heart. Not your love dove heart, but your, your heart, you know, that, that's full of Jesus Christ. Um, you know, it's not necessary for you to raise your hand or shout in church to praise Jesus, but, but think about Bethesda. We do raise our hand at the end. The minister every Sunday raises his hand and offers the benediction. That's him praising Jesus and us having a benediction. And sometimes we lay hands on people in church, especially when we're electing new officers. Well, the last thing, the last point is I don't even have to speak the words to praise Jesus. As Jesus sees my actions and reads my thoughts. That's one reason that I often ask God to please, you know, help me show the honor that Jesus Christ deserves through my words, through my actions, and through my thoughts. When I help someone, I'm showing Jesus' love and I'm praising Jesus. When I follow God's commandments to love others, that's the best way to praise Jesus. When I give in church or pray for people um, or act as the feet and hands of Jesus, when I do those things, you know, the action that's behind the faith, that's praising Jesus with my actions. So 
However you praise Jesus, just let it be from your loving heart. So let's take a second and say a prayer. Join me, please. Jesus, we love you and know that we can always say the words, praise Jesus to honor you. We can also honor you by simply whispering your name. It's not the words that are so important, but the action from a loving heart and the sincerity that is so important. Please help each of us to have a love in our hearts for others, all others, as you call us to love others as ourselves. Please know that we praise Jesus in our words, our thoughts, and our actions. Together we say, praise Jesus every day. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you, Dr. John Gardner. Thank you, Locomotive Lisa. Thank you, uh, Pastor Jim, uh, for all of your ministry moments. At this time, though, we're going to transition to reading God's Word, so I'm going to take my hat off, and then we're going to go to God in prayer. So um, will you join me as we read Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 17, the Ten Commandments. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is on earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work you, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not cover, covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Therefore, prepare your minds for action. Discipline yourself. Set all your hope on the grace that Jesus Christ will bring you when he is revealed. Like obedient children, do not be conformed to the desires that you formerly had in ignorance. Instead, as he who called you is holy, be holy in yourself in all your conduct, for it is written, you shall be holy, for the Lord your God is holy. If you invoke as father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. This is the word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now as we transition into our time of prayer, let's remember Joe McLeod, who was supposed to have surgery last Friday on a torn meniscus in her right knee. Well, that was rescheduled to this past Friday. So just keep her in your thoughts and your prayers as she recovers. Also, our very own Clara Fenton had eye surgery. And uh, please keep her in your thoughts and prayers as she's recovering from, from that painful surgery as well. And then uh, please remember Sandy Granger as her brother Billy Roof passed away June 18th and the funeral service was uh, recently on June 22nd. So keep Sandy and then Billy's uh, wife uh, Sherry in your prayers as well. Let's go to God's throne of grace. Almighty God, our loving Heavenly Father, we are grateful for this day as this is the day that you have made and we should rejoice and be glad in it. God, we have plenty of reasons to celebrate this day. First and, more, first and foremost is because we have a God who dearly loves his children. You protect, you make provision, you love us, 
care for us. We never leave your all-seeing eye. Lord, we thank you that we have the assurance of your love. That assurance that was demonstrated so beautifully on the cross where you would not even spare your one and only son, Jesus Christ. But rather, had him suffer and die for our sins. And then I'm grateful for your power that rose Jesus Christ, your son, from the dead, giving us hope, giving us victory over death and the grave. Father, if that was all you provided for us, it would be more than we deserve. So let us celebrate this day, this day that you have made. May we live it to the fullest and seek to bring you glory, honor, and praise. Lord, we also want to lift up our world, our nation, our community, our churches, and our homes. That, Lord, all would look to you for forgiveness of sin, as well as the healing that we so desperately need. Lord, may we all diligently search for and find your truth, your perfect peace, your strength, wisdom, and love. Lord, I continue to ask you to bless Pastor Jim and the session and the staff all those in leadership positions here at Bethesda, Lord, may we seek your will and your ways. May you continue to lead us, guide us, and direct us. For each member of your church, I ask that we would continue to seek ways to minister to others in Jesus' name. We know with this coronavirus and all that is going on, Lord, we get, we're not able to do mission trips and summer camps and Montreat and vacation Bible school, um, things that we're used to doing to Glorify the name of Jesus Christ to help grow and build disciples. So, Lord, give us wisdom on how to think outside the box and be creative and minister to others. And now, Lord, we lift up our church family who need a touch from you, the great physician and mighty healer. We pray for Miss Clara Fenton, Joe McLeod, Betty Sue Weber, Susan Marshall, Jim and Gail Sinclair, Betty Coombs, Lynn Bradley, Cornelia Biddle, Fran Goodwin, Mary Tatum, Cindy Derringer. Harvey Shaw, Art Delperdang, Betty Whitman, please be with the family of Sandy Granger and the loss of her brother Billy, along with others who have lost loved ones recently. Lord, you know each and every need, whether it's physical, emotional, mental, or spiritual, and as the great physician, we ask you to work in each of their lives for their good and for your glory. And now, Lord, we bring these petitions to you in the mighty name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And at this time, it's the privilege I have to uh, welcome up our pastor, Pastor Jim Davis, as he rightly divides God's word. Pastor? Thank you, Brent. God bless you. Well done. Well done. This morning's uh, New Testament lesson uh, comes from uh, 1 Peter uh, chapter 1, verses 13 through 25. Hear the word of our Lord. Therefore, prepare your minds for action. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Discipline yourselves. Set all your hope on the grace that Jesus Christ will bring you when he is revealed. Like obedient children, do not be conformed to the desires that you are formerly had in ignorance. Instead, as he who called you is holy, be holy yourselves in all your conduct. For it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. If you invoke as father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. 
You know that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your ancestors, but not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ. Like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him, you have come to trust in God who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You've been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed. Through the living and enduring word of God. For all flesh is like grass and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers and the flower falls. But the word of the Lord endures forever. That word is the good news that was announced to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this moment in time. Lord, we would ask that you would send your Holy Spirit into this place and into us, that we might hear your words of love, truth, and grace for our lives in uh, the midst of this meditation. Lord, uh, please uh, accept the words from my mouth and the meditation I offer up here today. Uh, may it be pleasing unto you and May you uh, send your Holy Spirit through it uh, that we might hear uh, your words. Lord, in Jesus Christ's name we pray these things. Amen. Amen. Well, we uh, are here on VBS Sunday, and it is uh, an honor and a privilege uh, to have served with uh, so many dedicated folks. We hope uh, that uh, the God's love was shared um, uh, in many ways uh, for all those involved, for uh, all the kids and families at home. I know it was a blessing for uh, staff and all the volunteers uh, who came to uh, your doors and uh, all those who it took to put this uh, whole thing together video-wise to bring this to you here uh, in the electronic form. So, so uh, as you uh, might see, uh, we have uh, all the characters uh, of VBS and uh, we had uh, a wonderful time. It was a blessing to get to know um, Rocky Mountain characters and uh, identify these uh, through our um, two very uh, characters, uh, Locomotive Lisa and Coltrane. Uh, what a wonderful job they did. And um, we heard the power of Jesus, the love of God, transmitted in all sorts of interesting ways. So I hope it was a blessing to you. If you have not seen it already, please log on to our website uh, or our YouTube page and check it out. We know it's going to be a blessing to you. You know, um, there's uh, the, there's the, this theme that we had for the Rocky uh, Railway VBS, and uh, it, it was uh, not only trust Jesus, but it was set in the Rocky Mountains. Uh, the Rocky Mountains are a, um, a huge mountain range in the middle of North America. And uh, what an appropriate setting, it, uh, it is a, a wilderness setting. Uh, there are a great many uh, places that you can go and never see another human being for days in the Rocky Mountains. So uh, we discovered uh, the many ways God meets our needs in the Rocky Mountains uh, in specific ways. On day one, we uh, heard Jesus' power helps us do hard things. Trust, Trust Jesus. Jesus. Uh, we heard that Jesus' power gives us hope. Trust, Trust Jesus. Jesus. Uh, Jesus' power helps us to be bold. Trust, Trust Jesus. Jesus. Uh, Jesus' power lets us live forever. Trust, Trust Jesus. Jesus. And Jesus' power helps us to be good friends. Trust, Trust Jesus. Jesus. Now, that was a double two, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Uh, they, uh, they were all great catchphrases uh, and themes for each day that we keyed on and tried to expand upon uh, through all the characters of the Rocky Mountain that, that were introduced. Um, as always, everyone um, is uh, welcome in the place that uh, 
God makes, even in the wilderness. Uh, today's uh, message is entitled Trusting Jesus, which is the, the main ca catchphrase, as you heard, uh, more specifically, trusting in God. Uh, trusting in God when things seem uh, to change so rapidly in this life. All too often we find ourselves uh, in our own wilderness story, uh, not unlike uh, the Israelites uh, of uh, the Old Testament. We heard the uh, Ten Commandments offered up by Brent earlier. And, and the Ten Commandments were given to the Israelites uh, in the midst of their wilderness uh, story. And, and the, the interesting thing about the Israelites' wilderness story, uh, they spent uh, 40 years uh, in the wilderness. And if you uh, look at, at a map of the geography uh, of this area where they went, if you had enough time, enough water, and a little bit of resource, uh, you could actually walk the entire uh, space of the desert in less than a week by yourself on foot. Uh, so, so for 40 years, um, the Israelites uh, were lost in the middle of this wilderness. Uh, it's much smaller, actually, uh, than even the Rocky Mountains. Uh, so, so God clearly had a, a plan for the Israelites. Uh, no, they didn't have a busted compass. No, they weren't um, uh, great uh, travelers uh, and um, geographers. Otherwise, they would uh, figure out ha how to have gotten out. Uh, but that wasn't the point. The plan was for the Israelites uh, to have a wilderness experience. Every one of us goes through a wilderness experience of one, one way or another, of one sense or another. Uh, and uh, for uh, you young folks, uh, a wilderness story is where you find yourself uh, feeling alone, where you don't feel or see or hear God in the midst of anything. You feel very alone. So often, uh, all too often, we find ourselves in the middle of our own wilderness story uh, in, in our life. Uh, life at times really can throw us some curves. And, and you know, it seems uh, the world can uh, put a lot of things in, in your way, in your path, in your life for that matter, and, and get you so busy that you become lost. Lost in the midst of stuff, lost in the midst of uh, habits, lost in the midst uh, of, really, you can even be lost in the midst of a, a room full of people. You can feel very alone. And that's what a wilderness story is, feeling alone, feeling uh, like God is not present in your life. Heard some, someone say, uh, once say that there are, are two things constant in this world, God and change. Uh, God is always there. God can't leave you. God always loves you. Uh, God's there 24 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, all through uh, your life. God even knew you before you were born. One day, when we all live our lives, breathe our last breath, uh, we'll stand before God. And, and then we will know who God is. Uh, so Peter writes in the New Testament, uh, 1 Peter, uh, Peter, uh, first chapter of verses 13 through 25, uh, writes of um, how young Christians are to grow uh, in the love of God. Um, Peter's writing to uh, churches that are trying to figure out how to be the church of Christ, how to, to actually um, live out their faith for the first time uh, believing in Jesus as uh, our Christ, as our Messiah. So uh, Peter uh, writes about some very specific pieces. One is we must discipline our minds. It says, therefore, prepare our minds uh, for action and discipline ourselves. Uh, the second is um, all our hopes are through God. All of our hopes, all of our dreams, all of our love, all of our relationships, are all those that are healthy and good and upright are through God. Based on God's truth, God's love, and God's grace. The third point he makes is uh, we were not to be influenced by the desires of ignorance. Uh, the Peter writes, like obedient children, don't be conformed to the desires that you formerly had in ignorance. And then he goes on to say, be holy. Instead, as he said, uh, he, he who called you is holy, Peter writes, be holy yourselves in all your conduct. 
Be holy yourselves in all your conduct. For it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. He goes on and writes, uh, live in reverent fear. Not being um, afraid, but having a healthy respect for God. A reverent fear is having a reverent respect for God who is in charge of all things. No matter how much we want them to be about uh, our will and our desires, uh, ultimately it is not about us. It's about God. Most of us uh, start out uh, being born, and, and between the ages of zero and eight, we learn our uh, families and, and our friends' uh, understanding of what's good, what's moral, what's ethical, what's right, what's wrong, uh, what's healthy, what's not healthy, what's good behavior, what's bad behavior. And then from eight to 16, we try on that behavior, and we kind of tweak that along the way and, and gain some greater understanding. And then from 16 to 25, uh, we pretty much go off, adopt either our family's construct on how to do life or our own, uh, and, and try to live that out. And by the time we hit our mid-20s, uh, that's when we figure out, great, this is working or this is not working. For many of us that it's not working, we turn to other things instead of God, uh, to drugs, to alcohol, to other things that we would um, try to replace God with, our own desires, our own morals, our own causes, our own personal agendas. But the truth is, each one of us was born with a God-shaped hole, and only God fits in it. You can pour everything else, healthy and unhealthy, in it, food, drugs, whatever but only God will fit that only God completes us it's not what we want but it's what God wants so somewhere around our mid-20s us for some of us we have children and as soon as we find um, we hold our first child and realize this is my child and this child is completely helpless and dependent on me to live and survive in this world and to learn what's right and wrong in life. It showers over us as we understand we've become parents and that it's really not about us. It's about our family. It's about God's family. So many of us wake up when we have kids and realize, oh no, uh, maybe it's not all about me. Maybe it's about God. That's why Jesus, or uh, Peter writes here um, about the blood of Jesus. We are redeemed through the blood of Jesus. And that's why Jesus had to die on that cross, to pay for our sins that we commit. Some of us can't break the chain. The Ten Commandments were given to the Israelites, and the Ten Commandments were, were wholly good uh, for uh, sanctification of life. But sin gets in the way every time. And so the Ten Commandments aren't enough. And that's why God sent Jesus. That's why we're to trust Jesus. While we love Coltrane and Locomotive Lisa um, and, and Dr. John and, and Dr. Ed or Professor Ed, um, we're to trust Jesus above all else. We place God at the top of our to-do list and everything else shakes out correctly. As soon as we put other things at the top of the list, how to live our lives or how we identify ourselves other than being a child of God, then we get lost. And that's why Peter writes, trust is faith and hope set on God alone. He goes on to write, obedience to truth and genuine love from the heart. The love of God comes from and resonates through the human heart. That's why we reflect God's love when God is working through us. That's why Peter ends this piece of scripture with, uh, we are born anew through the blood of Jesus and our baptism. When we accept Jesus Christ into our life, then we become a, a new creature. Our heart 
uh, becomes a, a new thing and we see the world differently. We no longer see it through selfish, sin-filled eyes. The Bible, God, is our corrective lenses, our glasses that help us to see ourselves as sinful and see others around us as God's children. And then we can recognize that we are part of God's bigger family. The Bible, we find the basic building blocks of healthy relationships, whether it be a relationship with uh, God or others in your life or even yourself. These are three basic components that we find over and over again in the writings of Paul, Peter, in the New Testament, as well as the Old Testament. And these three basic building blocks of every healthy relationship that we have with ourselves, with God, or with others is truth, trust, and love. For some of you, you've heard me say it more than once. But today we place our trust in so many other things other than God. We step on the gas pedal and we trust the car will go, especially pulling out in traffic. When we deposit our paychecks in the bank, um, we trust that it'll be there tomorrow or maybe the next business day. When we drop our children off at school, we accept, expect at the very minimum they'll be safe and maybe they'll learn something that they can apply when they become adults. When we go to the hospital, we trust a, a certain level of medical care will be provided. When we drive down the streets of our community, we expect that the police will keep us safe. When we vote someone into office, we expect them, or at least we trust they'll have the good sense the Lord gave them and, and actually do the right thing most of the time. We place our trust in so many things in so many people, why is it that we are hesitant to trust Jesus? You heard uh, John talk about uh, trusting Jesus earlier. Uh, you heard trust Jesus all through VBS if you watched our videos. And the Rocky uh, Railroad VBS thing is all about discovering Jesus in the middle uh, of a wilderness experience. Wilderness is an interesting word. It comes from the word wild. You might expect things to be wild in the wilderness and, and not so much in the cities. And that kind of mostly goes. We won't encounter bears or moose in the middle of most of our cities. Some cities do. Maybe uh, Anchorage, Alaska, you would see a, a moose walking down the street. Uh, but the wilderness experience that I spoke of earlier with the Israelites meant it was a growing period. It meant that they had to decide whether they were really going to embrace God, the God who freed them, delivered them, and is taking care of them. The God who brought the Israelites Moses and the Ten Commandments. They had to decide whether they were going to follow God's plan for their lives or not. So, for us, it's the same thing. In our lives, we have a choice in this world. Kids, adults, really old adults, we all have a decision to make. And we'll make it at one point or another. And even if we choose not to decide, that's still a decision. You're either going to choose God's plan for your life, and follow God's rules for living out life or not. I encourage you to choose God because God already knows who you are. God's already written your path and it's an awesome path. It wasn't necessarily guaranteed to be easy. It might be hard. And you know, sometimes we'll have wilderness experiences, but you know, sometimes the hard things in life teach us the best lessons. If all we had was good stuff, then we would never um, know uh, what it was to hurt or feel pain or feel heat. But sometimes repairing things that are damaged, often we learn far more in the repair process than we would ever learn if we never broke a bone or got hurt. So I'm not saying go out and get hurt or anything or break bones. That's not the way to, to uh, truth or uh, 
intelligence. But we are to feed our minds, our bodies, and our souls. Eat good food. Search for God's truth. Love with an open heart. And love based on truth, trust, and the grace of God. You know, um, let us never forget um, the very word uh, Israel or Israel means literally translated in, in the original language Hebrew he who struggles with God or those who struggle with God <laughs> it kind of sums up humanity really <laughs> that kind of makes all of us Israelites at some level because we're all sinful and we all struggle with God most of the time but the key is if you choose God's way you choose God's will for your life then you'll learn and grow and mature along the way based on love and truth and the grace of God, trusting God. It's not built on hate. It's not built on hurt. It's not built on um, putting others down so you can feel better. It's not built on lies or cheating or stealing. It's built on doing the right thing because God calls us to. We find ourselves in the, uh, our own wilderness stories at times, and, and you know, uh, it's not fun. Uh, we have to struggle sometimes. Um, it's why uh, God gave us the, the Bible, the Ten Commandments, um, but you know, uh, we still have this decision to make. Are we going to choose God or not? Are we going to trust Jesus or not? here at VBS and at Bethesda Presbyterian Church, we encourage you to choose the love of God. Choose God. And where you're at right now, it might be great or it might be not so great. But God's got a plan for you. As long as you follow it and as long as you struggle, as long as you keep choosing God along the way, God will deliver people in your lives. God will show you the way. Holy Spirit's whole mission in this world is to help show you the way. Pray for the Holy Spirit to come into your heart every day and show you God's way. That is how you trust Jesus every day. So, the question is, are we going to trust Jesus or not? If you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, if you're um, alone, uh, if you feel alone, even in the midst of a room full of people, if your life is not going the way you want it to go, if you have people lying to you, stealing from you, and cheating you out of love and truth and the grace of God, then place your trust in God. If you need help, reach out to us. Reach out to me, and, and I'll reach out to you. We'll pair up, and, and we'll pray together, and uh, we'll work on your relationship with God. Because as soon as you have a relationship with God, everything changes. Let's pray for that. Gracious God, we pray that you would bless all of those who, who are, are hearing this message. We would trust that you would send your Holy Spirit in to all those who call on your name. Lord, help us to, to trust you. Help us to place you on top of our to-do list. Help us to place you at the top of our lives. Help us to choose your will for our lives and not our own. Lord, help us to, to make the most of this life. Give us the courage to, to do the hard things in life while we trust you. Give us the courage to go out and share your love with others. Give us the peace that comes with knowing that you are our God and you've got this all worked out. And even though we might be struggling right now or we might not even be feeling you in the midst of our lives right now, help us to know that you are there and we are not alone. Lord, we thank you for sending Jesus Christ to die on that cross to redeem our souls and help give us a joyful existence in this life. 
Lord, we pray for everyone who is seeing this and uh, we're sharing this with. Lord, change their lives and help them to choose you in all that they say and all that we do. Lord, most of all, help us to trust Jesus. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Now may the power of the Lord reside in your heart. May the love of Jesus open our eyes. And may the power of the Holy Spirit inspire our souls, the souls in our hearts and our feet, that we might go and do and reflect your love, O Lord, in all things. Amen. And I'm in.
Welcome to the VBS finale of Rocky Railway. Man, we have had a great week, and I am so glad you've joined us back today for our VBS finale. I'm Locomotive Lisa, and this is... Cole Train! Y'all, he's never been here all week long. I guess he's working on the railway. All right, let's shout his name. Ready? One, two, three. Cole Train! Charlie, I need that money fast. Yes, they're about to add it up, and they're going to announce the final. And we got to make sure Logo for Lisa gets the pie. I, but I need you to get here ASAP, okay? You got the check, right? Okay. All right. I'll right, see you in a minute. Hey, loco Locomotive Lisa. Well, How are welcome, you? Welcome, Coach. Hey, BBS finale. Why don't you say hello to the boys and girls that are watching? Oh, we're not filming yet. Yes, we are. Hi! No. Johnny, are we filming? Hi! Oh, hey, boys and girls! The BBS finale! Yes! Yes, I'm so excited! This is the pie in the face, right? It sure is, and yes. guess what? What? The boys and girls, I was just getting ready to tell them how the results have already been tallied, and the results are already in the envelope, and your face is already decided. Wait a minute. We're turning in the money now? It's no, no, no. It money. was this morning. Uh, yeah, I, uh, yeah. Yes. Um, I've got conductor, nope. conductor Charlie was busy on the train. He's, he's bringing a, one final check. Yeah. Oh, oh, we're all done. Yep. Okay. Yep. And I was just giving this too. So I need to add this towards Coltrane. They specifically said this needs to go to Coltrane. Okay. So, is that okay? We'll do it later. Okay. We're going to continue the mission all summer long, but for the pie in the face contest, we're done. But yes, they can keep bringing money. Okay, awesome. well, you know what? I'm glad it's done because I know all the boys and girls out there have put their money in cold train envelopes. You know what? We have been closing our eyes and ears this whole time, but the crew leaders kept bringing in money and bringing in money. Now, we didn't get to count it, but it was a lot. It was way more than I thought. I'm so, it is a God sighting. Can you believe it? Well, I can't wait to see this God sighting. But before we do that, you remember that alpaca farm? Oh, the alpaca farm! That little baby was so oh, cute. So cute. So and cute. Alicia? Oh, sweet lady. Thank you. At Carolina Pride Pastures. Man, she's letting us name a baby alpaca. You guys have been sending in the names all week long. So cute. Awesome cute names. names. All of them are great. And Especially Cole. Somebody, a couple people put Cole in there. I, yes, somebody put Lisa, too. Well, it's a boy. And Loco. <laughs> Loco. Loco. Hmm. Okay. Well, anyway, so we, we sent the names to Alicia at Carolina Pride Pastures, and she picked a name. I really wish... We had like one of our Bible buddies here to help us announce it. Or maybe like a good friend. A good friend. A good friend. Yeah. And we've been learning about that. Yeah, yeah. Jesus Power helps oh, us be you good know, friends. Wasn't that um, Lawrence Elk that reminded us Jesus Power helps us be good, good friends. friends? Trust Jesus! <laughs> hey, hey, Lawrence! Hey, Lawrence! How are you? My good buddy, Lawrence. Awesome. Do you yes. know? The envelope, please. Drum roll. All right, everybody. Drum roll. We've been doing that all week. Oh, this is so exciting. Boys and girls, are y'all ready for this? Let's open it up look, together. It says from Alicia. From Alicia Holbrook. Okay. Here we go. Maybe it's Lawrence. Money given is, is going to one of two places. One is the alpacas, 
uh, to go to the families in Ecuador. Again, I've been there, so this is kind of personal for me. I've got some mementos from Ecuador. I've got pictures. I've got memories of wonderful people from Ecuador. And I'm telling you, they are going to be so appreciative. It's a life-changing gift that uh, we all get to be a part of. So thank you so much. And the blessing is Alicia Holbrook at Carolina Pride, Pride Pastures. Pastures has an alpaca that will bear the name Cole and <laughs> from Bethesda Church in this community yes. you know, for the rest of its life. That's yes. pretty powerful. That's pretty cool. All right. You know what? All week long, we have been closing our eyes, and they've known the numbers. And we know they're great numbers, but we don't know what they are. So maybe we should tell them the numbers again. Boys and girls, parents, families, do y'all want to know how much money has been given towards the missions? Yeah. I hear some people here. I think I hear some people out in the community. I think the boys and girls want to hear. You know what? Let's do this. All can, right. can we close our eyes and ears and let them hear and see, okay. but not us? All right. And this is going to show Thursday and Fridays. Okay. Result, yeah, or? we're going to have three slides that at home they see. Okay. The first one. Okay. Are y'all ready? The first one is going to be the results from. Thursday and Friday, day four and day five okay. of Vacation Bible School. All so right. it's not the total winner, but it's who won those two days. They okay. haven't seen those yet. Are you okay. ready? Ready. I'll just turn my back. How about that? Okay. I'm not going to look. All right. We good? Awesome. Awesome. What's the second slide? The second slide is who wins. All right, so this is a total for me and a total for you for the whole week. So it will say who won the pie in the face. So really make sure you close your eyes this time. Okay. All right. Okay, guys, I know you're excited out there, and we are pretty nervous. One more slide. We just got to tell you this was such a God sighting. And while we really do care who wins the pie in the face, we care more about the total amount that is going to the families in Ecuador and Faith Dixon and her family for her heart transplant. So we want one more slide to show you the total amount that is going to these important projects. And we couldn't watch this one, right? Uh -uh. Okay, we'll close our eyes. Ready? Go. <laughs> Okay, we ready? Okay, boys and girls, Wait. we don't know who it is, but, but we're about to get crazy. It's about, normally there's like 150 kids here and 100 adults and parents and families. Everybody's going crazy, going, cheering for their favorite person. So boys and girls, let's try to reenact this as best we can. Who wants Cole to win? Yeah. And who wants Locomotive Lisa to win? Yeah. You know what? We we can apply something that we've learned this week. We can. Yes. Jesus' power helps us do hard things. Trust, Trust Jesus. Jesus. This is going to be really hard for you to take a bite in the face. I, I'm so nervous, but you know what I remember? What? Jesus' power helps us be bold. Trust, Trust Jesus. Jesus. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Lord's Elk maybe has another envelope? All right. Who knows? Our good friend Lawrence. All right, Lawrence, be a good friend. Lawrence. Lawrence has the totals for us. Okay. 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 What a good friend. What a, oh, Lawrence Elk reminds us that Jesus' power helps us be good friends. Trust, trust Jesus. Jesus. Oh, you do it. I can't look. No, I'll do it. I don't trust you. <laughs> At least he trusts Jesus. Wait, that's not a good friend, is it? A good friend trusts each other. Yeah. yeah okay. So you, right. you just meant you're not. I'm so nervous. Oh, I've been waiting forever. Hey. Jesus' power helps us live forever. Trust Jesus. Okay, okay. We're stalling. We're stalling. Okay, I got one more stall. I'm so hopeful that I won. Jesus', Jesus power gives us hope. Trust Jesus. Whoop, whoop. I'm all engineers. Yeah, brother. We're right on track to find the results. Yeah, you got to stop with the train jokes. If I don't ever hear another train joke, it'll be too soon. Okay, here we go. Drum roll! Here we go! For the 2020 High in the Face! Don't get off track! Go to... Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. They already know this. Oh my goodness.
in there. But we really real. didn't. We really didn't. Like for real. Hold on. Woo! That's a Hold record. On. That's a record. We beat a record here. Can you believe this? Y'all, the grand total going to missions is wow. $2,000. $523.95. That is a record. I think it was 2400 last year, that which was a record. Wow. All right. Yo, I only won by 200 Holy cow. Oh, thank you. Oh, oh, oh man, that was closer than I would have liked. But I won. Yay. All right, let's get going here. All right, without any further ado. We need ado, a chair. Sometimes you just got to do what a man's got to do. Two hundred dollars. That's pretty oh, close. Oh, Lord, that's Elks being a good friend. Because I was way behind, wasn't I? Somebody really. Will you, up here? Uh, you know what? I forgot something. I forgot something. Mm. I forgot something. She forgot the pie. Let's go pie. The pie. come into your home and to do this uh, for you guys, for the glory of God more specifically. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, the power of Jesus does really help us to do hard things. Trust, Trust Jesus! Jesus! Oh, that was weak. Try one more time. With all you got, Trust Jesus! Let's go to God in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you. We thank you for a pies in the face. We thank you for generous people giving generously. We thank you for the opportunity to come together and fellowship and proclaim your love, your grace, your glory uh, for all to hear. Lord, we thank you for all the volunteers. We thank you for all the folks who, who signed the little folks up, for all the little folks who, who cheered for Lisa, who cheered for Cole, for the uh, alpacas that will go uh, off to um, uh, profoundly change lives uh, in Ecuador. 
Lord, we also uh, thank you for the generous giving uh, that will go to a new heart for Faith Dixon. Uh, we pray for her and her family that they might be lifted up in, in this uh, time and that, uh, oh Lord, you be glorified and this uh, beautiful child get a new heart. Uh, Lord, we thank you for opening the eyes of our hearts this, uh, this past week of VBS and uh, help us all to reflect you, O oh Lord, in uh, Jesus' power in all that we do, all that we say throughout uh, our lives from this day forward. Uh, o oh Lord, we pray that hearts were changed and that we all might truly uh, trust Jesus a little more or completely in our lives. Lord, we thank you for this awesome um, gift gift of VBS, gift of joy, gift of uh, fun, and gift of proclaiming your truth and love for all. In Christ's name we pray. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. One more thing. Thank you boys and girls for tuning One. in. Thank you parents. Oh, okay. Thank you volunteers. See you next year. <laughs> and that's a wrap. Spaces for wide open.